Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit. Now with us every.
praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hi, everyone. Often we think of God's grace in terms like that He, Jesus died for us, covered our sins, and that's kind of the extent of grace, that, that God did something to save us. But I think we need to have a larger vision of what God's grace is in our lives. And I think the way I want to get at that is by a, an Old Testament passage that uh, is Moses giving instructions to the Israelites right before they entered into the Promised Land. It comes from the book of Deuteronomy, from the 8th chapter. And I want to read, he's kind of reviewing what he's, what he, what's happening um, and where they have been over the last 40 years. And in verse 3 he says, Yes, God humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone. But rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Those are pretty famous words that we've heard probably over more than one occasion, that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, something along those lines. And I think it's important for us to understand what, what Moses is saying there about God. The idea here is that God provided when they were in the desert. There was no chance to grow food. There was no chance to kill animals, to eat anything in the desert. They were really at God's mercy. And that was intentional on God's part because God wanted to train the people of Israel to teach them to trust in God and trust in God alone. And so in the midst of that, if you're familiar with that story, that every night there would be this white substance that would fall to the ground. And in the morning, people could gather it up, and it was like a flour that they could then make into bread that they could then cook and then eat. And then at night, there would be quails that would come, and they would have quail to eat as well. The idea being that God gave them the food they needed to sustain them in the desert. Otherwise, they would have starved to death. And so Moses is reminding them that you don't live on bread alone, but rather every word that comes from the mouth of God. And that sounds good. That sounds really, I guess, maybe spiritual. But the reality is that what he's talking about is that the reason they were fed was because God commanded the environment to rain down this food that was unknown to them, this manna. They had bread because God commanded it to happen. God, in his gracious heart, provided food for them. That's an important piece for us. And before I get to the, the why of that, the other side of that is it says we don't, we don't live by bread alone. The idea here being that, um, that when we try to get our food apart from God, it's not going to work out well. It says that uh, one of the things I was reading is that um, bread alone, when it's acquired independently of God's word, will not sustain. That idea of bread is that sustaining thing. That's the idea of, of Jesus being tempted by Satan to say, turn these stones into bread. Jesus could have done that, but he chose not to because he knew that God would provide for him in another way. So the idea here is that we are to live on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And what I want to do is I want to pull back on that around this idea of God's grace. God's grace in our lives is very much a part of every moment, every breath even that we take happens as at the 
leading and the command of God. The earth as it moves through its seasons is happening because of God. God commanded it. God commanded the, the crops to grow, the rain to fall, the snow to fall, the air for us to breathe. Scientifically, all the pieces that had to come together so that humans could live on earth at the right angle of the earth and the, and the makeup of our environment to be able to breathe it, that all happened at the command of God. That's all a part of God's grace. It's God's grace to those of us of faith, but it's also even God's grace to those who don't put their faith in God. That is the gracious nature of our Lord. And I think when we step back and go, everything that happens in our world, the, the, all the pieces that are provided for us that we take for granted, for, like the Israelites, bread, really comes from God and God's word, God's desires, God's command to make it happen. So when we look at our world, we look at all the things we have, and this was part of Moses' um, comments to the Israelites. When we look at all that we have, for them it was when they were getting to the promised land. For us, we would say this is the promised land if we look honestly. It's all been provided for us by God. So I invite you as you go through your day to be thinking about how God provides for you in ways that we don't always think about or don't always comprehend. Take a moment and imagine how good God is in all the provisions that he has for us. Even if we are struggling in some way, God still is providing. I invite you to be encouraged that God knows what you need and he provides out of his gracious hand. God, thanks for today. Thank you for all that you do provide for us. We often forget that, Lord. But help us to see it anew, even today. I ask that, O Lord, in your name. Amen. Ash Wednesday is a little over a week away. We will meet at, gather at 6.30, both in person and on Zoom, to uh, mark the beginning of the 40-day preparation period before uh, Easter. If you'd like to have the impartation of ashes in your own home, there are some available in the office on Wednesdays when the office is open. So I invite you to take advantage of that. Also, just want to let you know that uh, one of the things that we're uh, also rolling out here is the ability to give by texting. And you can, you can give through our website, but we've also created a way that you can give by texting. And I want to uh, let you know that uh, if you text to the number, and you'll see this also in Constant Contact in the upcoming, and we'll talk about it on Sundays as well, um, the number 844-955-2628. If you text FAITHMN to that, you will, get, you will get a text back to set up an account. Set up an account that is tied to a credit card, and then you can simply give by texting on your phone. Just another way for us to be able to kind of make it easier for all of us to continue to be faithful to the work of, of faith uh, church. So we invite you to take advantage of that as well. So I hope you have a good day and God bless everybody. We'll be talking soon. Bye-bye now.